Hi, I'm going to, in this video, go through two separate recursive bits of code. And the first one is for factorials, and the second one is a number sequence, similar to Fibonacci, called the Lucas numbers. I'm going to show each stage of a, a fairly simple recursive call and show you what's happening behind the scenes. Now, I'm assuming you've understood roughly what recursion is and the importance of general cases and base cases. Also, I need you to know about the call stack, because in each of these examples, I'm going to show you it working with reference to the call stack. So I've got a separate video on that if you need to watch that. And a separate video also on just recursion generally. Now, let's start with code to find the factorial. And to keep things simple, I'm going to just call this with the argument 4. So I'm going to find the factorial of the number 4. Now this is the same as going, well, what is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1? And the answer should be 24. But let's have a look at how this is going to work when I call this recursive factorial function. We know it's recursive because I've got it calling itself inside it. Now the call stack is going to contain multiple stack frames for each of our subroutine calls. The primary function of the call stack is to store the return address, as in where you're going to return to after the, the subroutine finishes. Well, as soon as I call factorial with the argument for, I stick a stack frame on my call stack. Now to simplify this a little bit, I've just put what this call is and where we're going to return to afterwards. So the return address is where we're going to once we finish. The first call is just going to go back to our main program. In my call stack video, I had this down as line numbers, which won't really work here. In reality, it's just an actual memory location. Okay, so we've called factorial with the argument for n is 4. So therefore, n is not equal to 1. And so we're going to have to try and return n times factorial n minus 1. So we've hit our recursion because I'm calling another instance of a function currently being executed. So factorial n minus 1 is factorial with an argument of 3. And so we stop executing factorial 4 and start trying to execute factorial 3. So this gets stuck on the call stack as well. But we've hit the same problem when we look at factorial 3 because again, 3 is not equal to 1. So I've got to call another instance factorial n minus 1 again, which is factorial 2. And again, we have the same problem because again, 2 is still not equal to 1. So we have to call another instance of this. But thankfully, we've hit the stopping condition, also called the base case, which is when n is equal to 1. So we stick on the, on the stack like usual, but this time we can actually do something about it. So far, the subroutine calls have just sort of passed on the problem, we haven't really tried to do much. Now we can actually do something and return a concrete value, which is 1. So this instance of factorial is done, so we can remove it from our call stack and it gives us this value 1. Now this value 1 is going to be used by factorial 2. So in effect we're going to sort of work our way up this series of subroutine calls filling in any missing values. Right so for factorial 2 the missing value was 1. So we're doing 2 times factorial n minus 1 but we now know that's 1. So we're filling in that 1 with this result. 2 times 1 is 2. So now this 2 is going to be used by factorial 3. And we've got to remove it from the call stack as we go. So we've got n times factorial n minus 1, or n is 3 in this case, and factorial n minus 1 was 2. So 3 times 2 is 6. And the last subroutine call to finish is factorial 4. So 4 times factorial n minus 1 is, as we now know, 6. So 4 times 6 is 24. Factorial of 4 returns 24, and we are done, as evidenced by the empty call stack. So it really is a case of passing the buck, passing the buck, passing the buck, until we reach our stopping condition, and it starts to actually unwind and solve the missing pieces. So very elegant, confusing just to look at and stare at the code, but it is quite an elegant way to approach this problem. At least when it works. I mean, if you don't have a base case, if you don't have a recursive call which moves you closer towards the base case, it's going to eventually converge on the base case, it won't work and it will not be elegant at all. Now, I think a nice way to think of this is as soon as you are calling another 
instance of itself, really that initial call is paused. It's paused until the later subroutine calls are resolved and it works backwards. So these are all still active. They were still all on the stack midway through, but they were just paused until the other calls were resolved. But this is actually a relatively simple example of recursion. Let's look at a little bit of a more complicated one. This done with a relatively obscure sequence of numbers you may not have heard of called the Lucas numbers. So the Lucas numbers are a sequence of numbers starting with two and one as your first two terms. And then the sequence increases term by term by just adding the previous two numbers together. Now, if that sounds similar, this is very similar to the Fibonacci sequence, just of different starting terms. So we're starting with two and one, not zero and one, but very similar. The solution is very similar if you've ever coded up Fibonacci. Might be good to code up if you haven't after watching this. So um, pseudocode for this, I'll give it away, is something along these lines. This is a little bit more complicated because as I'll give you a chance to spot maybe, we have in this case two base cases and one general case. You can have multiple base cases, multiple general cases. You've just got to have at least one of each. Here I've got two base cases. We can see the base cases because they're not calling itself. They are giving you an actual value and so we can stop for recursion at that point. The else clause here is used as our general case. Now I've put it in kind of orange so you can see it more clearly, but here we've got two calls of Lucas inside Lucas. So they're different calls because they've got different arguments, n minus one, n minus two. So we can see what's happening here, right? We're setting our first two values to be two and one. Then after that point, we're generalizing the problem by just saying, well, give me the Lucas number one position ago plus the Lucas number two positions ago. We're trying to generalize our problem using recursion. So for instance, if I called this with the argument five, Lucas five would return seven in this case because it's in our fifth position. Just to give you a tip, which isn't always explained if you see example solutions, is what you might call a driver subroutine. The code on the left doesn't give you the sequence on its own. It just gives you one number in the sequence at that position. So to get a nice sequence, you've got to use some other code in order to generate this successive series of numbers. Now, driver code is just to do something to another subroutine. It's just a general term. Here I've got a for loop, which is just calling the Lucas subroutine however number of times I call it. So if I call it with the argument five, again, this time it's gonna give me five values because of the first five Lucas numbers because it's calling Lucas with increasing arguments. I mentioned recursion and iteration are different concepts, but occasionally we've got to kind of use iteration to kind of grease the wheels of recursion. At least I found that. Let's look then at how this will work if we trace through it with again, five as our argument, this should end up with seven at the very end. Okay, we put this on the call stack as we call it. We look at the code Well, n is not one, is not two. And so I've got to look at this general return line. And I'm going to spawn two other subroutine calls here, Lucas four and Lucas three. So we're not doing anything yet, we're just passing the buck down the line, we're winding up our recursion tree in this case. Looking at Lucas four, well Lucas four is gonna produce Lucas three and also Lucas two. Now Lucas two is good because we're hitting our base case. And so once we're done, we can start to return one. Now the way I'm gonna show you this is I'm gonna go through all of it before we start unwinding. So we're gonna hit base cases in all of our branches. Where my work in reality could vary on how the compiler manages it, the way I'm doing it is the simplest for me, but however you wanna picture it is okay. Um, bear in mind that this looks like a tree only because we've got, or a binary tree, only because we've got these two subroutine calls. You could have more, you could have less. It's not always gonna look a nice Christmas tree. Okay, right, we've done a look at those two. Let's now look at Lucas three on the right. Well, this is again gonna produce, this time, Lucas two and Lucas one. Now, our call stack looks quite ugly here because I've now got a fair few repeats. 
I've got Lucas 2 twice, Lucas 3 twice. Doesn't look very pretty and is not super efficient, but we've got to store separate instances of it in our call stack because we're not quite sure what's going on just yet. We're still following this recursion. Now we keep going with Lucas 3 because it hasn't, it hasn't uh, finished yet. We get Lucas 2 and then Lucas 1 is our last subroutine call because we've hit our base case in every branch of this what has become a tree. Now like I say, in reality it might unwind a little bit earlier depending on what it's thinking or, or what the approach is but the general situation is it will go all the way down to the bottom until we reach our base cases in every branch of it. Well now I can start to take stuff off the stack as I return values. So let's start with the last value added, that's quite important. The way stacks work is the last stack frame is removed first. So Lucas1 is going to return 2 according to the code and Lucas2 is when it becomes the next stop is going to return 1. Well it's tempting now to look at Lucas3 but actually if you look at our stack it's Lucas1 over on the right hand side which is our next one to, to remove. So Lucas1 is going to give us 2 and we've got Lucas2 giving us one, and then Lucas2 is going to give us another one. Well, now the next one is Lucas3 on this far left. Well, this is a general case, and so I can't just get either two or one. I've got to actually add up the two numbers. Well, one plus two is three. Now looking for Lucas3 on the right. Well, one plus two is again three. Now looking for Lucas4 on the left. Three plus one is four. And then the top subroutine call, the one that started it all off, 4 plus 3 is 7. And we saw that 7 was indeed the fifth Lucas number. So, call stack is empty. We're done with this recursion and it spat out the answer after lots and lots of calls. Okay, few. If your name's Lucas, you were name dropped a lot in that uh, demonstration. But I have chosen two quite nice examples, right? Lucas numbers and factorials are, are quite easy to visualize. I hope it's not been too hard to visualize. Other aspects of recursion are a lot harder to picture. It's not always a nice linear progression or a nice tree progression, but picturing a few simple examples does help us at least believe it's working and we're not just thinking it's complete magic. So we're gonna look at this and compare it to iteration in the next video, but for now, hopefully that was useful.